So in Eve's case, her fundamental problem was just this. She thought she knew better than God. God said, if you eat that tree, eat of that tree, you will die. I mean, it's so clear. <laughs> Words couldn't be clearer than that. If you eat from that tree, you will die. And Satan somehow convinced Eve that is not really true. He doesn't really mean that. He's such a loving God. He won't let you die. Doesn't he say that to some of you? Sin is not so serious like the Bible says. He doesn't mean that the wages of sin is death. You really believe the wages of sin is death? Oh no, the devil says. That's not death. God is so good and he's so kind and it doesn't matter if you keep on sinning. You remember that day when you said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart? That's a magic formula that solved all your problems. You'll definitely go to heaven. That's one of the biggest lies of the devil. God doesn't wait for somebody to say a magic word like some mantra or something and then, oh, okay, now you're secure for eternity. It's one of the greatest deceptions. And uh, thank God it's being exposed at least in this church so that nobody who hears the message in this church can ever say in the day of judgment, Lord, I never heard the truth. You heard the truth. You may have rejected it, but you heard it. You remember when and there's a story in, Jesus said it's a true story of, it's in Luke 16, of a rich man and Lazarus, the beggar. And the rich man never cared for that beggar on the street. They were brothers. Do you know that they were brothers? Yeah. That's why it was a sin. It was not some strange homeless man. It was his own brother. Because they were Jews. They were all children of Abraham. They were brothers. That man sitting outside the gate was a child of Abraham. Just like this rich man was a child of Abraham. And the Lord wanted them to care for one another. It's just like born again Christians are brothers. The same way that man was his brother. He never cared for him. That was the sin of the rich man. And that's why he went to hell. And when he went to hell, he discovered something. I want you to turn with me to Luke 16. He discovered something that he didn't take seriously when he was on earth. That man never thought he'd go to hell. He was absolutely convinced he was going to the synagogue regularly and the rabbi in the synagogue always thought he was a wonderful guy and made him read the scriptures and exalted him and all that. And he thought, boy, I'm definitely going to get a high place in heaven. And he ended up in hell. And the rabbis did not determine that. God determined it. We read in Luke 16 about this story beginning at verse 19. And when he went to hell, he was burning there. Now, by the way, I want to tell you, this is not a parable. Many people read it as a parable. There are many parables Jesus spoke about the sower, and the seed, about the prodigal son, about the lost sheep. Those are all parables, imaginary stories which have a lesson. But this is not a parable. This is a true story. And I'll tell you the reason for that. In no parable does Jesus mention any names of living people. He never in a parable does he speak about Abraham or Moses or... No. But here he speaks about Abraham. Here he speaks about the other man called Lazarus, the prodigal son. There's no name because it's a parable. It was not a true story. This is a true story of two people who lived in Israel and one of them went to hell and when Jesus told this story that man had already been burning in hell for a long long time even though he was among the children of Abraham who thought they were God's people it's a great warning for us uh, many Christians uh, think that everything's alright with them but it's, just, it's a warning and this other man whom they despised went into God's kingdom. He obviously, obviously had some faith in God. And when he was burning in hell, he said, please get, please, will you please send Lazarus in verse 24 to put some water on my tongue. He doesn't ask for water on his tongue. You see, even when you go to hell, they are evil. That evil nature doesn't go away from them. 
he does not want Lazarus to remain in heaven. He wants Lazarus to come down to hell as well. That's his aim. Can you imagine how people are evil? You can't, can't stand to see somebody else being better off than they are. Do you find that in yourself? Somebody else is better off than you are and you somehow wish that he would also suffer in some way so that he'd become like you. That's exactly this man. That's the attitude of people in hell. You see somebody in heaven and say, how can I get that fellow down here? Lazarus, how dare he be in heaven and I'm out here. Please send him down here to get some water so that he knows that if Lazarus comes to hell, he'll be there forever. That was his thing. But he was burning and, Jesus, and Abraham said, verse 25 and verse 26, there's a great gulf between heaven and hell. Those who are there can never come here and those who are here can never go there. That's the end. It's a final thing. There's no such thing as like some people teach, after many years of suffering, God will finally transport them into heaven. Well, you can believe that rubbish if you want. But Jesus said here, this is, the, this is the words of Jesus that Abraham said, no one can ever cross from there, verse 26, to here, and no one can go from here even if they want to. And a lot of people there in hell want to cross over, but they can't. It's so clear. I believe Jesus. Because he's the only one who knows about heaven and hell. He's the only one who walked on this earth who could speak with authority on heaven and hell. You and I can't. Then he, okay, he realized that Lazarus cannot come to hell. But somehow, can I get him out of heaven? You know, when you see someone in a good place, you want to somehow get him out of there. He says, okay, if you can't get him to heaven, send him back to earth. I beg you, Father, verse 27, send him to my father's house. It irritates me to see him in heaven, this beggar who was lying at my gate. Send him to my father's house and then he says, he has a concern for his five brothers. It's amazing. The people in hell today feel sorry for their relatives on earth who they know are coming there. But those relatives don't know it. Imagine people had a burden in hell for their unconverted relatives who think everything is alright because they go to church they sing the songs they please the priest or the bishop and they think everything is okay but the people in hell know that they are not okay I tell you one thing however blind we may be once you get to hell I hope you'll never go there but those who go there the eyes are opened immediately they know reality immediately when you go to heaven your eyes are open immediately. Those who go to hell, their eyes are open immediately. And they get a burden. Okay, I can never get out of here. I can't even get water here. But my brothers, he wasn't thinking of all the others, but he was thinking of his loved ones. My children. My brothers and sisters who I lived with for so long. Who I grew up with. Where are they going? Are they going to come here? And please send him to warn them. And Abraham said, verse 29, no, they've got the Bible. See Abraham's answer. They've got Moses and the prophets. The word, the phrase Moses and the prophets means the five books of Moses, Genesis to Deuteronomy, and all the other prophets all the way to Malachi. It's the Old Testament Bible. That's what he was saying. They've got the Bible. Let them read that. It's all written there in the Bible. But he said, no, Father Abraham, verse 30, if someone goes to them from the dead, they will listen. If Lazarus goes back and says, hey, fellas, you saw me like a beggar there, but I died and I went to heaven, and I'll tell you what happens like that. You know, if you, go, if you search Google for those who say they've gone to heaven and hell, there are numerous, it's not one or two people. The hundreds and thousands of people who say they've gone to heaven and all, absolute garbage. Because Abraham says no one can cross over from here to there. All these people who say I died and I went to heaven, they were in a coma. I've heard of people who were in a coma for two years. Medical coma, and they, they recover out of it. So somebody's in a coma for um, half a day or something, or 
um, couple of days and then he has some dreams and all and he comes back and talks about heaven and hell. It's all the things that were, went through his imagination. They didn't go to heaven or hell. I don't believe even one of those stories. I believe the Bible. It is appointed unto men, Hebrews 9.27. Hebrews 9.27. It is appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment. I believe that. Hebrews 9.27. So I don't believe these people who say they died, came back and they died again. You mean they died twice? <laughs> I don't believe that type of garbage. If you, if you want to believe, you can believe that. It's just a lot of nonsense. And the, if you do a Google search, there are hundreds of people saying that all over. And Abraham said, they've got the Bible. Let them listen to that. I remember somebody once came to me and said, hey, there's a testimony that I discovered in a Google search of somebody in South America or somebody who died and went to hell and came back and told everything about it. Shall we print out that testimony and give it to people so that people realize? You know what I said? Exactly what Abraham said. They got the Bible. <laughs> if they don't listen to that, they're not going to listen to this testimony, which is fake in any case. These people do all this too. They write books on it. And they make millions of dollars selling those books. I went to heaven and came back. I believe Hebrews 9.27. It's appointed unto men once to die. And after that, they're not coming back. The judgment. They may be in a coma. Oh, that I can understand. And come back from a coma. There are many hundreds of thousands of cases like that in medical history. They cannot go from here to there. They cannot go from there to here. And then, listen to this. This is the thing that struck me. Abraham said, they got the Bible. There's no need for them to listen to anybody. They got the Bible. And that's exactly what the Bible, the Lord says today. And then he said, no father Abraham, if, verse 30, if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Ah, people who go to hell realize that it's because they did not repent that they went there. I'll tell you one thing. The message of repentance is the message which is least preached in Christendom today. Even in the songs, try and find a song that speaks about repentance. Look at any hymn book and see how many songs speak about repentance. Even the songs that are sung in public meetings, uh, to God be the glory, great things he had done, so loved he the world that he gave us his son. The vilest offender, I'm quoting that song, well-known song. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. It's not true. We changed it when we sing it in our church in Bangalore. The vilest offender who repents and believes. But the original song is the vilest offender who truly believes. What do you mean? If you believe you go to heaven? The apostles preached repentance and faith. And what God has joined together, let no one put asunder. That's what Jesus said.